3.5 Selecting Procedures for Calculating Derivatives So we're going to create logarithmic functions that require chain rule and quotient rule to find dy dx. Okay? If I'm finding dy dx, I know I'm going to start with y equals, and I'm just going to make up logarithmic functions. So a, a logarithmic function that has chain and quotient as well um, would look something like this. I could do a natural log of x squared over 3 minus x. Do you see here, I have the chain. Isn't this inside of an ln? So there's my chain part. And can you also see a quotient in the sense of a quotient inside? So that has chains and quotients. Do you understand this would be a little bit trickier? It's like, oh, why do they have to put multiple ideas? They do. So there is an example of a multiple idea problem. Okay, another one. Well, could you do a chain and quotient that's a logarithm? Well, could you also do, say, log base 8 of um, 3x minus 2 over x squared? Does that have a log with a chain and a quotient? Yeah. And then you have to be able to see what to do. You have to be able to do this quotient rule, but in the mean this piece, there's a chain in it. So you have to be able to see multiple facets and multiple pieces, and they get more complex. All right, create relations that require implicit differentiation and product rule to find dy dx. All right, so the reason I put relations is implicits aren't functions usually. They're relations because well, it's not y equals. So let's make differ, um, implicit differentiation that have product rules. So those are actually pretty simple. We're going to put 2x squared cosine um, y um, minus... 3x, or let's make that 8x just to make it look different, equals uh, y minus 2. That right there, oops, that right there is has a product rule and it's implicit. See the product rule right here? So th that's all it is, is you, you, just, you can make up a whole bunch of these. Um, I'm not going to make up more, they're, they're pretty straightforward. The biggest thing with these, actually I'm going to make up one more that, that's tricky. This, I mean, I, mean, I, I do want to make up one more. If I have, say, 3y minus um, 8xy squared equals y plus 9. Let's say I have that one. This product rule, when you do it, be careful. This negative, a lot of people forget to do the negative distributive when you do this product rule. That's a common, common mistake. It's when they do this product rule here, they forget to distribute the negative because it's really, a, this becomes a parenthesis piece. Or if you have a quotient rule here, same thing. You have to distribute the negative through a quotient rule. Be aware of those kind of things. They're tricky. Create trigonometric functions that require repeated chain rule to find dy dx. So repeated chain rule. Um, they, I also call them double chains, or, yeah, they're embedded chains. So those are the ones that look like this. Cosine 4, um, 3x minus 5. Do you see how we have a double chain? What you have to realize is you have this is really cosine of 3x minus 5, and outside of that is a fourth power. So you have to be able to see that is a double chain, a chain inside of a chain. All right. Um, another one you could see is something like this. Um, y equals, let's just do the radical of uh, a tangent uh, uh, 5x to the third. Can you see that one also is a multi-chain? Okay. It's trigonometric inside, but don't you have a chain outside of it? So you have, you have chains outside of it in different ways. Um, it, it, this square root is kind of like, uh, it's just one half power. You could actually write it as one half power, which you should for taking derivatives. Create exponential functions that do not require chain rule to find dy dx. So that's actually really simple ones. I mean, I, I, you can do like simply uh, y equals 8 e to the x minus uh, 3x to the fourth. That right there is a very basic derivative, okay? There's no chain rule necessary. Now, most of them do need chain rule, but we're just trying to find ones that don't. Just make it a little bit easier this time. Um, here's one that does mess people up. If I had, say, uh, this. Um, some people saying this get a little confused. They think they need chain rule. No, this is just quotient rule. Okay, now, you would use chain rule. If you move this up and make it a negative power, you just created a chain rule. If you did this, if you change this to 9 times 
4 to the negative x minus x, then this would all of a sudden become a chain rule. Do you see a chain rule here with the negative x? If you were to move that up. But if you left it as is, it's a, it's a quotient rule. It's not a chain. But you could make it a, a, a chain rule to make it easier on yourself. But this, again, is not... This is a chain rule needed. Create inverse trigonometric functions that do not require chain rule to find dy dx. So something that does not require chain rule. Okay, so that'd be like y equals, uh, let's just say, hmm, 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 uh, trig function. Let's say 3 cosine negative 1x plus 4x. That right there does not require chain rule. It's an arc cosine with a number in front. There's no chain rule there. There's no product rule there. I mean, you can kind of think of that as a product rule, but it's not really. I mean, any of this, that, that there's no chain rule required. Okay. You could also do like y equals uh, 4 over, uh, hmm, uh, mm, let's do arc tangent x minus 2. There right there is an inverse trig function that doesn't need chain rule. Okay, as long as there's nothing inside here, you don't need chain rule. Okay, this doesn't need quotient rule. This one would need quotient rule. Got it? Now, because you can make this a chain rule. Remember, you could make this a chain rule. You can make this 4 times arc tangent x to the negative first minus 2. Could you make it a chain rule? Yeah, if you want. But you don't have to. You can do a quotient rule here. Create functions that require chain rule, product rule, and quotient rule to find dy dx. I can use chain rule, product rule, and quotient rule. Okay? So this one is going to be kind of ugly. So say y equals the hmm, uh, x squared, the square root of x um, minus 4x squared all over... Um, Cosine x. That would be a nasty one. But do you see I have product rule? Do you see I have chain rule? And you see I have quotient rule? There. Okay, you can make all sorts of things up. You could, um, hmm, what we, we want a product quotient. Uh, we can do a um, uh, 3x cosine squared x over the square root of x minus 2. All right, I have a chain rule here. Actually, I have a chain rule here, too. I have a chain rule here, a chain rule here. I have a product here, and the whole thing's a quotient. So this is kind of ugly, but you could do this. Again, you see a product here. This is going to be a chain. This right here actually is a chain. Okay, you could technically move this up and make it a whole bunch of products, which would be annoying as can be. There we go.